Hello. I just picked this book up. It's Joanna Besford's latest colouring book, Rooms of Wonder. And I thought it would be fun today to flip through it and maybe colour a page. I found this in Target Australia. That seems to be the cheapest physical store. I'll link it down below and also a few other places where it can be bought, such as Amazon. And in one Amazon review, the reviewer said that this book is far too complicated. So I'm really curious to see if it is. Let's get into it! Just like her other books, there are gold foil accents on the front. Although I did notice there is no inner flippy cover, it's just a plain front cover, no dust jacket either. But otherwise, the first few pages are pretty much the same with what this book belongs to and some instructions. And then we get into the pictures themselves. There's actually quite a variety from single pictures to individual little pictures like we saw on that previous page, which are quite good if you just want to colour one small thing. And then there are patterns, entire rooms, which are some of my favourite pages, and then a few like this which are very, very busy. But this isn't unusual for Joanna Besford books as far as I'm concerned. It looks pretty much similar to a lot of her other designs that have come out in earlier books. The paper is the same, I think. It's a slightly off-white creamy paper, quite thick and really good for coloured pencils and ink pens. Oh yes, I was tapping on the mushroom one. That is the busiest of all the designs, I think. I really like the one on the left-hand side, though. I like that there are a lot of little potion bottles and things in this particular book. This is a nice page spread too. So you can see the designs are front to back and this can be a problem if you want to use alcohol markers, which will bleed through this paper. And watercolours aren't really great on it either. I have tried it in another book of hers and it just made the paper buckle quite a lot and it just didn't look good. So really, I think Joanna Basford herself recommends using ink or coloured pencils for these books and I totally agree with that. Love this page spread, by the way. From the complaint reviews I've read, they were saying that the pictures are just a bit too small for colouring and it makes it really hard to see. But for me, it's not too much of an issue. But if you're wanting to colour something quickly, this might not be the book for you because these designs are very detailed and it does take time. But like I said, the pictures on the left, you could just colour in one little picture at a time. Like you don't have to fill the whole page at once. That one on the right is another one which would be quite easy to do. This page is pretty busy though, I don't know that I would particularly colour this, but I do like the ones that are single images as well as multiple ones. This is a nice page spread too, as is this one. You can see they are quite busy, but they are supposed to be rooms of wonder, and it certainly is a challenge. The other thing is that if you do manage to finish a whole page, they look amazing with all of that detail. So it is time consuming, but the payoff is that you get a really cool looking picture. I quite like the four on the left hand side too. Those would be fairly quick to colour by comparison to some of the others. I do really like the variety of little designs and pictures she's put in this particular book and it's a bit more than some of the others. For example, the World of Flowers one was pretty much all flowers and plants, whereas this one has a lot more subject in it. I like the cute owls, that would be a really fun one to colour. I love this next one with the desk as well. That one really appeals to me. So overall, there are a lot of pictures in this book and I think it's value for money. That is, if you like coloured pencils and ink-based pens or ink itself for colouring. Otherwise, with alcohol markers, something's going to have to be sacrificed. This book reminds me of her previous one, The 30 Days of Creativity, that has a nice variety of pictures too. Overall, I'm glad I bought this book. It's a pretty good one. So I quite like the look of it. And it doesn't seem to me any more complicated than her other books because she is known for fairly complex designs. They all seem pretty much on a par and there are ones which are maybe not quite as complex as others. So I think there's actually quite a nice variety in here from the really busy to ones that are like this one a lot more simple. And I think there's a nice range to suit everyone's tastes. On some of the pages, like for example this one, this could almost be a backing and maybe not necessarily coloured in on its own. So you could conceivably use marker pens to colour this one and if it bleeds through then this page spread is maybe not quite as important. So I think there are a few designs in here which one could use marker pens on, alcohol markers that is, and not destroy the entire book. Of course, then there are plenty of other designs which have really good ones on the front and back. 
So on those ones, I would not be willing to use marker pens, unless of course you're happy to sacrifice one of the pictures or use paint pens to go over them so that you can't see the bleed through of the alcohol marker. That might be another option as well. So now I'm going to color something in. I'm not entirely sure what. I will sit and think and choose a picture. Well, that was quite hard to choose because there are a lot of designs in there that I really like, but I think I'm going to go for this one today because it is birthday month for me and this one is a birthday cake with balloons so I might as well pick this one. I also am going to use alcohol markers on it because the page on the other side is this one here with the musical instruments and this one I'm not so bothered by. I can probably just go over it with a paint pen or something opaque later if I decide to but I feel like this is a good sacrificial page so that I can use markers. I will probably also use some other pens or even colored pencils over the top. I'm not too sure yet but I'm definitely going to start with a base of alcohol markers and we'll see what they're like in this book because I have only ever used markers in a Basford book one time before so I think it's high time I try it again. I'll stick a piece of paper in here just so that I don't wreck this side as well with the ink possibly leaking through two pages so I'll just pop that there to protect that drawing at least. Ah, my Motley collection of markers. One day I will get a full set of brush markers, but for now these will do. And I'll just cherry pick ones out of here. I thought this picture was going to be fairly easy to do. And of course I was wrong. It took me ages. It looks deceptively simple, but there are a lot of tiny details in it. And I had kind of made a mess of the color scheme. I really should have started with the outside of the cake first, rather than coloring the balloons in rainbow, because it doesn't really match the rest of the color scheme that I ended up going with. I have a tendency to overcomplicate things sometimes. This was definitely one of them. I'm wishing I'd used less colors because I mostly like the colors that I used for the icing which was pink yellow and blue and I ended up coloring all of the outside decorations with combinations of these three colors but of course the colors of the balloons end up clashing with the rest of the cake I mean I suppose in the grand scheme of things it really doesn't matter that much I decided that the pink I'd initially used was too pale compared to the yellow and blue so I've gone in with a much brighter one and I decided I wanted a chocolate cake so I'm colouring in the parts that I was translating as cake and I always love a chocolate birthday cake with a very bright icing apparently. I don't think I'd actually want to eat that necessarily but it looks quite pretty on here. But can you see what I mean that the balloons just don't go? Oh, I'm going to be fixated on that the entire drawing but trust me it gets a whole lot more chaotic because at this point I really had no idea which colors to choose for the rest of the drawing and I was just picking out pens randomly going with a rainbow garland here to match with the balloons to try and tie it together a bit better but the biggest problem is the background both on the outside of the cake but especially on the inside because I'd used pretty much every other color there wasn't a single color I could use that was different and so I ended up going for a very pale background to begin with but I didn't really like it that got changed later in the picture I just picked out any old pens to color in the presents. I wasn't thinking much at this point. That pink is insanely bright by the way. But they turned out okay. And I do have to say that marker pens are much faster than colored pencils. You can cover a lot of ground more quickly and the pens layer on top of each other very well without ripping the paper up, which is the biggest downfall of water-based pens. If you use regular felt pens, it will start destroying the paper very quickly if you use more than one or two layers. So the alcohol markers were a lot better to use, although they do bleed through this paper considerably, as we will see later on. The biggest issue I found though with the marker pens is that they go very, very flat. Just in my experience, when I use colored pencils, I'm able to get a much bigger depth of value range using dark to light pencils and you can get that with alcohol markers but they just lay very flatly on top of one another and so the picture kind of just looks a little bit 2D. It's like that really matte finish whereas colored pencils do tend to have a waxy or oily layer which gives some slight gloss and it does sort of show up a bit more like it's standing out. I don't even know if that makes sense but <laughs> that's what I was experiencing from these. 
This is the colour I decided to go initially with the background, but it faded into almost nothing. And then, in all of my infinite wisdom, I decided that I was going to paint the background on the outside of the cake with this deep indigo ink that is by Sennelier. Now this ink is a shellac based one, so it dries incredibly glossy and you could just see how shiny it is now, but it was also drying on there very quickly and getting very streaky, so I had to do another layer on top. And even that didn't fully fix it, but it does improve from what it looks like here. This ink does not bleed through the paper either, which is great. I am glad I added a darker layer to this because the cake was just looking a bit boring and I didn't know what else to do with the background. But of course now my cake looks a bit like it's floating out in space. So yes, it's totally meant to be a space cake. <laughs> But you can probably tell now with the glossy background just how matte the marker pens are and I didn't like that very much at all so I went over it with some coloured pencils and then I got a little more ambitious and dug out some metallic paint pens and some liquid pearls which is a 3D acrylic paint that's all shiny and I really like using those. They worked really well for sprinkles. It's very much a mixed media piece, so much for less is more, in this case more is more! Well, that turned into a crazy mess. I had to stop before I covered the entire thing with glittery bits and pieces, but I do quite like the effect of the sprinkles. I think that's really just made it stand out, and I kind of like the glitter hearts in the background too. <laughs> but what a mess. So this side is pretty much unusable now, unless I go over all the pictures with some sort of opaque pens, paint pens, something like that. We shall see, but I'll just flip it back to the side. <laughs> there we go. So I'm liking the book so far. I think there's some really nice pictures in here. Next time I might just stick to coloured pencils or something that's not quite as crazy as this one turned out. But otherwise I don't think it's any busier than any of the other Joanna Basford books to be quite honest. I mean yes there are some very busy pages but then there are plenty which are not quite as full on. So let me know in the comments what you think of the book. Is it something that you would consider buying or would you give this one a pass. I'm holding that open because I'm pretty sure this glitter is still not dry so I have to leave this open for a day or two I think. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button for more videos and I will see you all again really soon in my next video. Have a great day out there. Watch you later. Bye!